welcome. Now, this morning I just turned on my Vampire Amiga and I realized that it just doesn't boot up. As in, it's not even responding to control Amiga Amiga. It's actually, you know, there's a blank screen and the caps lock is, um, you know, constantly on. So it's just unresponsive. Now, I took the Vampire board out and as well as the um, A604N and, you know, everything else basically just left it as stock and it still did the same thing so you know quite a relief that you know the vampire you know doesn't less chance that the vampire is goofed so let's put that aside <laughs> and as well as this now this Amiga 600 is the one which I got uh, recapped by Amiga kit and uh, I did go inside and investigate and start investigating what, what the freak is wrong with this now next to the ID port, there are a couple of capacitors here and I noticed that uh, C214 and C239 were both in, you know, installed in the wrong polarity, which kind of outraged me a bit because I kind of got this professionally recap. Now that aside, I got a capacitor kit from Retrobench. I highly recommend them. Actually, I've um, had good experiences from them. Very good service. And also they basically uh, provide a sheet that talks you through it and i got a cd32 pack for them from them as well uh, which again goes through all the details in how to recap what exactly to do things to watch out for on different revisions uh, with mine it's actually the revision 1.1 which actually says amiga 300 here uh, the amiga 600 was originally going to be called the amiga 300. i'm going to start on this i mean i already uh, removed this one here, the one, one of the ones which was um, wrong way around. So I'm gonna get myself some isopropyl alcohol and some cotton swabs. Now I have to say, Retrobench, your kits are fantastic. Literally, it's just like well thought out, color coded exactly as how I would love <laughs> love things that are color coded. Um, just makes life so much more easier, and you know, very clear instructions here on how to do it. I will link Retrobench in the description below. I'm not gonna do this with an air gun because I'm gonna melt that freaking connector. I'm gonna do this with the iron. The pads are just extremely delicate on the on the 600, more so than any other pads I've dealt with. Now I removed this one, this one seemed fine, the pads are alright. This was the other one which was, um, you know, back to front. Uh, the one here was back to front, this um, C239 was back to front also. So I'm going to remove these two. hated the idea of doing this one because I didn't want to damage the um, the keyboard connector here. Uh, just like the one near the inductors. I just uh, hate when it's like in a tiny space like this. Yeah, okay, that's another one. The happy dude there. Was done. You okay, painstakingly got these two out very carefully. Because there's these two that are quite close to that inductor, which makes me nervous. And it's these green 47 off ones. Huge thanks to Retrobench for the color coding and the organization of this. Otherwise, this would have been double the freaking head mash. I really appreciate that. So those freaking two are done, they were so awkward. So these three here are all 100 microfarad. 
Unfortunately, recapping did not solve the non-booting issue. Well, I didn't expect it to, part of me knew it wasn't going to be, but, you know, I recapped it regardless, uh, in the hope that it may do, but, you know, I needed the recap anyway. I know for sure that the Amiga is behaving as if someone has their fingers on control Amiga Amiga keys in order to reset it and just not letting go. You know, the cups lock stays on and it just stays in that state. It's permanently getting a reset signal, which indicates that there is an issue around the triple five timer circuit. So I have an issue with monitors. Now, this is Wayne's nine inch PVM monitor. And uh, yeah, it will be on its way to him in, you know, the next day or so. But I have a couple of issues while it's been here. You see, when there's two monitors together, things start happening. And then you end up with tiddles over here. Yeah, I couldn't resist. I saw this uh, six inch monitor and I found it adorable and actually I found it perfect and ideal as a workbench monitor. Since I do a lot of retro stuff on the workbench and testing and electronics and so forth, I thought, you know, why not? decided to join in the Discord call and help Fault Find. We all became detectives. It was our first time tackling an issue like this on an Amiga, so we were learning a lot at the same time. The best way to learn, I think. Axel had the schematics of the triple five timer circuit in front of him and was suggesting which points to test in order to make sure the voltages were right and the traces are intact. It's still there's a chance of transistor is um, faulty and so this one, I should right? tell you what, it's just a lot easier for now. We could check directly the the line after the transistor, mm -hmm. just so we can make sure there's um, the trace is okay. Trace is okay. So mini cute PBM. I know. <laughs> it's perfect actually for this stuff. Yeah, nothing. It's black screen. Yeah, it's 0. 0.7. Okay. Just a second. Wait. Now that, I press the if you want to short it with like, uh, you just switch your multimeter to current mode or something like that. Let me just double check again. Uh, are you reading any current there? No point. No, nothing at all. Uh, okay. Uh, do you need to switch the probes? Is that one of the oh, things mm. where you need to <sighs> That. <laughs> no, so stupid! It's okay. okay. Uh, if he has like a 10 ampere, you might want to use the 10 ampere one. Yeah, that was so stupid. That's so zombie uh, fight today. happens to everyone. Uh, don't ask me why I asked, because he happened to me several times. I see something up. Yes! And obviously that's okay. gonna... It, it's something, but... Yeah! Yeah, it, it will. It's it's because there's no floppy drive, so it's seeking that first, and then it'll go on to Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. <gasps> yes, it works! Right, we almost resurrected your Amiga. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's a relief that it's not actually... Yeah, so... Very good. We confirmed that... The Pretty much everything is working, it's just that it's being kept in a reset loop. Yeah. Thank goodness. 
<laughs> right, let's turn this off. You can breathe now. <laughs> I can breathe now. Was, that's why I'm like zombified and look like crap. Because <laughs> I'm like de 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 freaking devoid of oxygen. <laughs> okay, right. So. Um, and just to kind of like, just, just to kind of make it clear, there is a 1.3 ram in this, so <laughs> it's not magically turned into a 500. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, nothing wrong with one point three. No, I kind of like the the one point three image and yeah, me too. The workbench colors are nothing beats them. Do you see uh, a transistor called the Q six two two? Yes. It's just underneath the um, okay. Q511. Okay. Yeah, R623, just found it. Okay, so if you want to measure which side is which, it's exactly the same that we did before. Mm -hmm. The side with the low voltage should be, first of all, 0 0.7. And we start by measuring and make sure you are in voltage mode with the probe. <laughs> in the hell, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Don't short paint. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> oh my god. It's like, not like I have a blue lip <laughs> on my meter or anything. <laughs> so six, two, three. All right, okay. Okay, six, two, three. Yeah, let's ensure both sides to see what voltage. Okay. Just faffing around extra stuff. Right, so this. We need to change it to danger mode again. Yeah, change to danger mode. <laughs> oh crap, okay. So it was on the right side. Off. I'm gonna test it again. Uh, it's so. not doing anything. Okay, okay, that's interesting. Now, basically here we are on the opposite side of the triple five. The problem is in between this transistor and the other transistor. Uh -huh. And we have very few components left, so I think we're close to finding them. So now if you turn everything off, can you check continuity between the resistor 611 and the capacitor 611? Okay, so resistor... 611 was the other freaking side, isn't it? It's all... Of course it is. <laughs> God. Of course it is. <laughs> Hit this. Would have been too easy <laughs> Okay, so six one one. Oh, thank goodness it was just as simple as that. I know. We just need to find out what the freak is. Right, so I've removed that now. Um, shall I just okay. yeah. test right. it? Let me talk. Yeah. Okay. No, it's done. Uh, <laughs> Shall I put it back? Uh, no, no, you can leave it off for now. Just, mm. I mean, don't lose it, but <laughs> leave it off. I mean, it's so small, I can breathe it in. <laughs> yeah, I will not advise doing that. <laughs> so at least finding the 555 as being a primary problem, or the reset loan, was a good bit of diagnostics from last night. Yes, definitely. So, oh, I think we so now, basically, what's left is the triple five could be just the uh, triple five that's damaged. That's always a possibility. Mm -hmm. uh, Probe directly out of pin three. In the triple yeah, five. We yeah, we did, yeah. And it just came up yeah. with two volts. Just steady. Just a steady, just steady. Changing. Yeah, exactly. Just yeah. a stable so we've, we've tested the capacitance and we've tested the uh, resistance, so they're correct value. So it kind of does seem like it's going to be 555. Yeah, in the output side was actually working, but there's a chance it's the input side that it doesn't work very well. That's uh, exciting. I know. 612. Uh, where was that? Where is that? Probably on the other side. Uh, <laughs> the other side. Where all the other freaking reject resistors are. <laughs> okay, talk to you later. Bye. Okay, see you later, Wayne. Good luck. Thank you. Hello. Oh, 
Hi, Scott. <laughs> Everyone's joining today. Just replacing it with a, with a new one anyway. Yeah. Hey. I'm joining, uh, but I, can, I won't be able to talk or hear you, okay? I just want to watch. Okay. That's all right. Okay, that's fine. I'm that's excited. Fine. I'm so yeah. excited. No, I said I was confident we would get it working. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and it will. So, yes. we've got our tool there. We've got, we exactly. Stuff, so. Yeah, and it's kind of, it's very close because to see it actually boot up was kind of like, okay, everything else is fine. The recap job is fine. <laughs> you did already a very good job, both of you, before, because you already tested all of the traces and so we mm. could immediately exclude a lot of other problems mm, that we already tested. And so we went directly for the stuff that comes after. And so that's how it works with mm. the electronics. You never know exactly what the problem is. You just have to probe at it until you find it. The good thing about it is we all learned, we all learned crap load about from this. Manny did all the work. I was just pointing a notepad across the street. <laughs> <laughs> all of that hilarious. That's much what we all do. He does all the work. I do all the work and you're just like, what about this? What about that? <laughs> yeah. And also, we take the credit for the job that she does. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, thanks. <laughs> Honestly, no. Maddie had the idea first. I, I just locked onto the 555 timer. Five, five Keep my tea warm. <laughs> well, that's that's interesting. I never thought of doing that. But... I must have used the energy. <laughs> that's good for the environment. Yeah. Nice the energy. <laughs> Oops. Don't <laughs> force feed my camera lens on my IPA. Drink it. <laughs> That's going to be for interesting videos, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I just I was trying to like put it over there and I just stuck it in the lens and was like, drink it. <laughs> <laughs> There's no like um, thingy on the TV, I don't know if it does a standby thing or anything. Wait, it's off. <laughs> well, that. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, yeah. the, 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 the LEDs. Make it a tiny, tiny bit problematic. For the <laughs> but the, uh, the LEDs didn't indicate either, so. So no, it doesn't work. Okay, so, very interesting. Okay, so it doesn't work, but it worked when we shorted the transistor. Yes. Because that worked for sure. There is literally just one component in between. Resistor 514. 514. Yes, that's the same part. Because so. mm -hmm. so finally the 555 timers have arrived and you know I can continue with this and find out that if it's the timer that was the issue. <laughs> My first time doing SMD like this. So it's Kind of learning experience, but very careful learning experience. Just tuck that down. better but not bad for you know someone who's doing SMT for the first time <laughs> well SMT chips at least for the first time I started to go through the schematic myself and check each point to see if all connections were good now I realized something strange there's no connection or no continuity <clears throat> between pin 2 of the triple five timer and pin 3 of the transistor Q622 also, shouldn't capacitor C611 connect to pin 2 of the 555 timer? 
well, no continuity. And no continuity between capacitor 611 and transistor Q622 either. So these three components are completely disconnected from one another. Why, when looking at this free schematic, is there nothing connected to pin 8 of this triple five timer? Isn't, isn't um, pin 8 supposed to be... It's supposed to be VCC, right? So why in this schematic there's nothing connected? And I even tested it on the actual chip, there's no voltage going into the the triple five. I was in pin eight of the triple five. It's just this is really confusing me. It's almost like the chip has no supply voltage. Okay, following this circuit, what I've been doing is testing the continuity between the components. Now, one thing I've noticed is that the component, uh, the leg two of the triple five timer, does not um, have any continuity with Q622 the collector which it should according to the schematic as well as the as as the capacitor here uh, there's just no continuity between them <clears throat> which indicates a broken trace quite a weird, weird sort of broken trace or could be a dry joint or something like this so yeah i have axel again on the, on the call and we are trying to sort this thing out once and for all because uh, as I said, I replaced the uh, triple five timer. That wasn't it. We've eliminated that. Uh, the C six one I completely replaced anyway, so that's kind of alright. Yes. Yeah. So the, the okay. So let's say let's say the resistor six one one, pin uh, two of the triple five, and uh, the collector of the that, yeah. transistor so six I... to two. Uh, j just with the soldering iron, without voltaire gun. Yeah. We just need to add, add a bit of fresh solder, a bit of flat. Mm. And, and then we try again because there is a chance it's just um, a cold solder joint and in that case it's quite simple you don't yeah. need to run any wire or anything so I think it's between the transistor and the capacitor and pin 2 because, so... because the capacitor and and the pin 2 and the um, collector of that trans transistor should actually join. Yeah, they should be the, all together yes. with zero ohm connection exactly. should be uh, so, just directly connected. Then there is a very high chance that all of these things are joined together in a single joining part and that joining part is broken. Mm. Oxidized or something yeah. like that. Because it's, it's very likely that it's a single component that failed a single part, a single part of the circuit. Yeah. So you, you, now you just need to follow it visually to see literally where it goes. Uh, uh, as an alternative, you can literally run a wire and it will work. But if, if you can fix by any chance the trace yeah. itself, it's it last, will be last much resort, better. yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's like that's really high. <laughs> Shit. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> It's stable, I mean, but it's as just... long as it's not in a precarious situation, <laughs> <laughs> you risk no, I mean, falling it's... or something. Like yeah, I mean it's stable. It's on top of the the baby monitor. Uh, that's okay. Uh, that's baby monitor. Stable. That makes it sound like something else. <laughs> right. Okay. It, that's okay. Yeah. Uh, when I hear baby monitor, I think of a small CRT monitor. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking. <laughs> right. Okay. So, what the freak is going on with this? After checking out the tracks together and discussing this, we decided that, you know, just using modding wire is, you know, it's just as good, it's just fine. Um, because it's not possible to repair the tracks. There, there are, there seems to be some corrosion in some tracks around here now what actually triggered me to call Axel again was you know the VCC issue on the triple five timer and the fact that it's just not connected so I just wanted to confirm <laughs> because it was just really weird it was uh, you know I needed a second opinion for this um, for just because of that it was just confusing the freak out of me so, 
He confirmed. He was just like, you need that. So what we did was we did a test. We connected pin 4, which is VCC, as you know, has VCC going into it. Pin 4 of the timer, which has VCC going into it. We connected that to, you know, temporary to pin 8. Right, on this, which is supposed to be VCC in. Now pin 8 was reading, you know, 0.1 volt, which of course, you know, is not enough. It needs 5 volts. So once we did that, the thing worked. You know, it all worked. So the, the basically the 555 timer was not getting enough power. Now, I don't know why this is not indicated on the schematics. It's very weird, you know, that they just omitted uh, marking out the triple uh, five timer pin eight being VCC it's just really strange but it's required and I think there must have been some corrosion to a track which goes to you know goes from VCC to pin eight and that's what's caused it to stop working it's okay. kickstart 1.3 as I said earlier uh, and yeah, it's taking a while to come up because it's seeking the floppy. Yay! It works! <laughs> Thank goodness! <laughs> so happy about this. I was like really... Really worried about the 600. I was just like, oh no. <laughs> I lost my little baby. But I haven't managed to recover. So yeah, if you're struggling with this issue and you're getting baffled by, you know, the triple five timer reset circuit then well essentially VCC check that check if pin 8 is connected to VCC a working Amiga now. <laughs> Thank goodness. Such a relief. <laughs> anyway, um, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for your likes, your shares. Do leave your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, don't forget to check out my other videos and do subscribe for more because uh, there is quite a library of videos now. Thanks so much to my patrons and for now I will say adios.